Hi, Daily Clout. I'm Kate Malgoza, and today I'm here with New York attorney Bobby Ann Cox. Welcome, Ms. Cox. Hi, thanks for having me, Kate. Good to have you here. Um, so today we're going to talk about the historic lawsuit win um, regarding the quarantine camps in New York. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that and um, why it's important? Sure. Yes, absolutely. So uh, there was a promulgated regulation uh, through the Department of Health. It did not come through the New York State Legislature. So this was done by Governor Kathy Hochul and her Department of Health. Um, and basically, they created this regulation, which would give them the power to pick and choose which New Yorkers they wanted to isolate or quarantine. And um, that could be in your home. They could force you to stay in your home or they could remove you from your home and they could put you into a detention center or quarantine facility, camp, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, they got to choose where you went. They got to choose how long you stayed there. They got to choose what you did while you were in quarantine. So they could actually tell you what you could and couldn't do. Maybe they took your cell phone. Maybe they cut off your internet access. Maybe they told you you had to take certain medications or treatments or whatever. So the, this power was very, very broad that they gave themselves. Um, th there was no age restriction. So they could take you, they could take your child, your, your grandparent, your parent, anybody. Um, and they could use local law enforcement. They actually put this in the regulation. They could use local law enforcement to help them enforce their orders of quarantine and isolation. So you could literally get a knock on the door from the sheriff or, or local police telling you, oh, sorry, you have to come with us. Um, and it was absolutely unbridled power. There, there were no restrictions in this regulation. There was no due process in this regulation. And what I mean by due process is there was no um, protections built into this regulation for the citizens. So the government could basically overstep, overreach, abuse their power in any way, shape or form, because there were no protections built in here. Um, and now, the regulation said, you know, in keeping with due process, we will do the, the following. But there was actually no due process built in there. And, and the judge who ruled in our favor, um, he's New York State Supreme Court Judge Ronald Plotz, he actually put in his decision, he said, there was no due process. He said, you know, this regulation basically gave lip service to due process. Um, so it was very clear this regulation violated existing New York state law, um, section 2120 of the public health law. We already have in place. It's been there for 70 years. Um, and that is a properly passed law through the legislature, which does say what you need to do if you need or you want to remove somebody from society who is deemed a public health threat. But the number one thing that that law says is the person has to actually have the communicable disease. This regulation that came through the Department of Health and the governor, there was no need for them to even prove that you actually had a communicable disease. They just had to think maybe you were exposed, maybe you had it, maybe you didn't, maybe you were exposed, maybe you weren't. So it was really a, just an absolute affront on not just constitutional rights, but also on separation of powers. And that was the basis of my lawsuit was the governor and the Department of Health are in the executive branch and they do not have the power to make this regulation. So the judge ruled in our favor. He struck it down. He said it was null, void. He deemed it unconstitutional. And he has prohibited them from, from enforcing or using this regulation. Now, of course, the governor and the attorney general, Letitia James, have uh, stated that they're going to appeal this decision. They're going to try and overturn it now. Um, but we, I am representing uh, a group of New York state legislators in this case. It's Senator George Borello, Assemblyman Chris Teague, Assemblyman Mike Lawler, together with a, a citizens group called Uniting New York State. Um, but those lawmakers that I'm representing in this case are calling on New Yorkers to reach out to Governor Hochul's office, reach out to Letitia James's office, and tell them we do not want this appealed. The, the, the judge ruled properly that this regulation is unconstitutional and we don't want you to waste our tax dollars fighting an appeal to try to overturn this decision. So um, that's what the, the legislators on the case are asking New Yorkers to do at this time. So it's super important people get involved and, and 
understand the, the breadth of this regulation, completely, complete violation of New York state law, the constitution, and just basic civil rights. So we're, we're very pleased with the decision we are in. We're looking forward to hopefully uh, defeating them on this appeal. So, so what grounds are they filing this appeal on? Are they, are they saying, you know, in, in one part of, of the court decision, something wasn't fair or like, are they changing something? What, what reason are they giving for appealing and what are they going to change to try to get the appeal approved? Right. So they have, to this point, the attorney general's office has filed what's called a notice of appeal, which means they've noticed or they've put in papers with the court that say, we plan to appeal this, um, but they have not actually filed their appeal papers. So I have not yet read the basis for their appeal. So I'm not sure exactly which part of the decision they are appealing. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be everything, um, <laughs> but yeah, th they have not filed those specific papers yet. Gotcha. Um, now I heard something um, regarding, you were talking earlier about how the person doesn't actually have to have this disease, this hypothetical disease. Um, now, is it true that if you if you were hypothetically detained by these people, that they wouldn't be required to actually give you medical tests to prove that you don't have the disease? They could just hold you there for as long as they see fit and then release you whenever they want. Is that true? Right. So the, the way this regulation was written was there was no need to prove that you actually had a communicable disease. So they did not need to, when I compare it to the law that we have here in New York that's on the books and has been for 70 years, when I compare this regulation to that law, you'll see that that law says there are many steps you have to take before you can remove somebody from society. And Number one, as I mentioned before, is you have to prove the person has the disease. But number two, you then have to have an investigation. There has to be evidence that shows that not only do you have the disease, but that you are not acting in a proper manner to keep other people around you safe, right? So even if you have, according to the law, even if you have the disease that they think that you have or they claim that you have, it doesn't mean you automatically are quarantined or removed from society. You have to be acting in a way that's dangerous to other people, that you're not you know, protecting them from your disease. Um, and you have to have a hearing that the law says, not the regulation, this law says you have to have a hearing in front of a magistrate. You have to be able to see what the evidence is against you. And you have to be able to rebut that evidence. You know, You can have an attorney representing you and helping you. So there are all these safeguards built into the law. This regulation strips out all those safeguards. It basically says the Department of Health thinks that maybe you had this disease or you were exposed to this disease, but even if you weren't, it doesn't matter, we're gonna lock you up anyway. So you can imagine the, the multitude of ways that that could lead to government abuse. I mean, if they don't have to prove that you did something wrong, so to speak, then they could do anything they want. They could they could say, well, yeah, we think you have tuberculosis. You can't even negotiate with them and say, well, wait a minute, hold on. The regulation says that, you know, I can take a test and prove that I don't have it. No, there was nothing like that at all in this regulation. Um, very scary, really unbelievably totalitarian power. And the fact that the governor and the attorney general are appealing this decision is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable because by them appealing this decision, they are basically saying flat out, hey, New Yorkers, we don't care about the constitution. We don't care about separation of powers. We want this power, even though it conflicts with existing New York state law, even though it conflicts with the constitution, we don't care, we want that power anyway. So, you know, this is an election year here in New York. Both the Attorney General, Letitia James, and the Governor, Hochul, are running for election in November. So I think New Yorkers need to wake up here and look around and see, do you really want these two people to hold these positions of power when they are clearly showing us that they don't have any regard for the New York State Constitution? They don't have any regard for existing New York state law. 
and they don't care about separation of powers. They just want this immense power in, in a totalitarian fashion. So it's really important on <laughs> New Yorkers understand what's going on here. Right. And, and you mentioned government abuse. Um, and that's a pretty slippery slope, I think. So what advice would you give? You, you mentioned some ways that New Yorkers themselves can get involved with this case and kind of make their voices heard and, and hold people accountable. But what advice would you give non-New Yorkers who are kind of silently watching this play out um, about how they can hold their their people accountable or how they can get involved with this um, this case in New York that is going to be pretty significant, um, especially if appeal goes through, which of course we hope it doesn't. Right. So, you know, I've been contacted by attorneys in other states and actually in other countries um, at this point, and they're looking to understand what the basis of my lawsuit is uh, and, and how did I, how did I win? Um, because this is, although this was the first case in the nation about isolation and quarantines. Um, there are plenty of other agencies that are making regulations in other states and are overstepping their bounds. You know, we're even seeing it at the federal level. It's been it's been really obvious at the federal level as well for the past couple of years. You know, we had the CDC, which is an agency under the executive branch on the federal level, making making law really, which they had no right to do. And that was when we saw the eviction moratorium on a nationwide basis. You know, then we saw Biden last year telling uh, OSHA, which is an agency in the executive branch at the federal level, uh, telling OSHA, you know, hey, make this rule that says that all employers in the United States that have 100 or more employees have to force those employees to get the COVID shot or they have to test weekly and wear a mask and all this stuff. And um, that went all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. And they, just in January, the Supreme Court ruled, no, OSHA does not have this power. This is not something that should come from the executive branch of government. Um, and then just a couple of weeks ago, we saw the United States Supreme Court again, ruling that this time the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, ruling that they had overstepped. They were trying to make a regulation that basically conflicted with existing federal law and they struck it down. They said, no, agencies cannot do that. An agency cannot make a regulation that conflicts with existing law. That's not the power that's given to an agency, to the executive branch. The executive is supposed to enforce the laws that are passed by the legislature. So it's very similar here in our case we had the same, a very similar situation. The governor and her Department of Health, executive branch, overstepped and did something that should have come from the legislature. And so we're we're just thrilled that this judge was so um, in tune with our arguments, um, and he ruled in our favor. So it it's really a fantastic win, and I'm really hoping it can be a model for other attorneys in other states um, and. and possibly in other countries, to use it as a model for them to help them fight what they need to fight in government overreach in their locations. Of course. And and is it true that you recently um, started a sub stack where you kind of talk about uh, medical freedom and this kind of stuff? And if so, how can people find that and educate themselves? Yes, I did. I just just recently, just a few days ago, um, started a Substack to help get the word out and share information. Um, so my Substack is attorneycox.substack.com. Um, and I, I basically just am writing articles about government overreach, executive branch versus legislative branch. Um, of course, I'm talking about this quarantine camp lawsuit that we've won. Um, and you know, there's also a website that the citizens group on this case has set up, and that's this web page is specifically about this quarantine lawsuit. So if people want more information there, um, I can I can give you that. That's unitingnys.com/lawsuit, and there there's a lot of information um, about what you can do to get involved. You don't have to be an attorney to be able to be effective. Um, people can reach out to the New York state governor, send emails, phone calls, write letters, tell her not to appeal this decision. 
you can reach out to the Attorney General, Letitia James, do the same thing, reach out by email, phone call, letters, tell her not to appeal this decision. People can help spread the word. That's a really big thing that we need help with here because mainstream media is not picking up this case uh, or this story. So people can take the link to this interview, for example, and post it on their social media, post it or send it out in their group chats or send it out by an email blast to their contacts. Um, people can talk about this case, our win, talk about the fact that the governor is appealing just when you're out and about, you know, socializing even, you know, going to a picnic or a barbecue, talk about it. Um, we also have flyers posted on that webpage, unitingnys.com slash lawsuit. There are flyers there that people can download to help and then post around or just print out and hand out to help raise awareness about this issue. Um, and we have a donate link there too. I'm doing this case pro bono, which means I'm not getting paid. So um, we have a donate link there, which would be super if people could use that. If you can donate, it's also it's very much appreciated because now I have to fight off an appeal by the governor. Um, so there are a lot of ways to get involved and there's a lot of information on that webpage um, in addition to my sub stack. So yeah, I, I definitely would encourage people to take a look at both of those. Well, thank you so much. And um, we'll have those links below in the description for this video that, so that people can be directed to those. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining us and taking the time to uh, speak with me today. Yes, thank you so much, Kate. This was wonderful. And I really appreciate you taking up this matter and helping us get the word out there. It's so important people hear about this. Of course, absolutely. Okay. It's Naomi Wolf of Daily Clout, and I am asking you to please, uh, if you like the video you just saw, uh, support us, become a member, donate. Um, you can send checks to P.O. Box 24, Millerton, New York, 12546, or go to Daily Clout, D-A-I-L-Y-C-L-O-U-T, become a member or donate. Thank you so much for your support. Every penny goes for paying our hardworking staff, paying hosting costs, and paying our lawyers um, who have been uh, leading the fight to keep you safe and free, to keep the Constitution safe, and to keep you free. Thank you so much.